Outcomes of Democracy In this lesson, we have to discover the best outcomes of democracy. How do we assess democracy's outcomes? Democracy is seen to be good in principle but felt not so good in its practice. To discover the outcomes of democracy, we just have to go through this chapter. Over a hundred countries of the world today claim and practice some kind of democratic politics. They have formal constitution, they hold elections, they have parties, and they guarantee rights of citizens. While these features are common to most of them, these democracies are very different in terms of their social situations, their economic achievements, and their cultures. Our interest in and fascination for democracy often pushes us into taking a position that democracy can address all socio-economic and political problems. If, if some of our expectations are not met, we start blaming the idea of democracy or we start doubting if we are living in a democracy. Accountable, Responsive and Legitimate Government In a democracy, we are most concerned with ensuring that people will have the right to choose their rulers and people will have control over the rulers. Therefore, the most basic outcome of democracy should be that it produces a government that is accountable to citizens and responsive to the needs and expectations of the citizens. It is of course true that non-democratic rulers do not have to bother about deliberation in assemblies or worry about majorities and public opinion. So, they can be very quick and efficient in decision making and implementation. Democracy ensures that decision making will be based on norms and procedures and procedures so a citizen who wants to know if a decision was taken through the correct procedure can find this out. One has the right and the means to examine the process of decision making. This is known as transparency. This factor is always missing from a non-democratic government. Outcomes of democracy can be found out as it is right to expect democracy to produce a government that follows procedures and is accountable to the people. We can also expect that the democratic government develops mechanism for citizens to hold the government accountable and mechanism for citizens to take part in decision making whenever they think fit. If you wanted to measure democracies on the basis of this expected outcome, you would look for the following practices and institutions. Regular, free and fair elections, op open public debate on major policies and legislations, and citizens' right to information about the government and its functioning. Democratic governments do not have a very good record when it comes to sharing information with citizens. In substantive terms, it may be reasonable to expect from democracy a government that is attentive to the needs and demands of the people and is largely free of corruption. Democracies often frustrate the needs of the people and often ignore the demands of a majority of its population. The routine tales of corruption are enough to conceive us that democracy is not free of this evil. At the same time, there is nothing to show that Non-democracies are less corrupt or more sensitive to the people. People wish to be ruled by representatives elected by them. They also believe that democracy is suitable for their country. Democracy's ability to generate its own support is itself an outcome that cannot be ignored. If you consider all democracies and all dictatorship for the 50 years between 1950 and 2000, Dictatorships have slightly higher rate of economic growth. Economic Growth and Development As you have already studied in economics, economic development depends on several factors. Countries' population size, global situations, 
cooperation from the other countries, economic priorities adopted by the country. When we find such significant difference in the rates of economic growth between countries under dictatorship and democracy, it is better to prefer democracy as it has several other positive outcomes. Economic Outcomes of Democracy Arguments about democracy tend to be very passionate. Over the years, many students of democracy have gathered careful evidence to see what is the relationship of democracy with economic growth and economic inequalities. Below are some of the evidences of economic growth and economic inequalities. Table 1 shows that, on an average, dictatorial regimes have a slightly better record of economic growth. But when we compare their record, only in poor countries, there is virtually no difference. Table 2 shows that, within democracies, there can be very high degree of inequalities. In democratic countries like South Africa and Brazil, the top 20% people take away more than 60% of the nation's income, being less than 3% for the bottom 20% population. Countries like Denmark and Hungary are much better in this respect. Reduction of Inequality and Poverty Democracies are based on political inequality. All individuals have equal weight in electing representatives, parallel to the process of bringing individuals into the political arena on an equal footing, we find growing economic inequalities. A small number of ultra-rich enjoy a higher share of wealth and incomes. Not only that, their share in the total income of the country has been increasing. Those at the bottom of the society have a very little to depend upon. Their incomes have been declining. Sometimes, they find it difficult to meet their basic needs of life, such as food, clothing, house, education and health. In actual life, democracies do not appear to be very successful in reducing economic inequalities. In such type of situation, is much worse in some other countries.